We are Turks, and horses are our wealth. Folk wisdom. Who is a zebroid? Have you ever heard of it before? This is the name of a hybrid animal obtained by mating a horse and a zebra. Zebroid is a hybrid reached by crossing a female zebra and a male horse. The animal looks like a horse, but it has distinctive stripes on its body and is very difficult to tame. And this is a mule. It also appeared as a result of selection. A mule is a hybrid cross between a male donkey and a female horse. For example, the Wusuns had a powerful cavalry of 30,000 mules. They specially bred them to transfer supplies. So today, we're going to talk about breeding, natural selection and hybridization. Hello, everyone. Breeding in Latin means sorting or selection. This is the science involved in the production of new varieties and hybrids. Charles Darwin's work on animals and plants was a key element in scientific breeding. It was published in the middle of the 19th century. Breeding is an art. According to Russian geographer Nikolai Vavilov, selection is evolution guided by the will of human. So when did a person start breeding horses and interfering with their natural development? The Botai culture is the cradle of human civilization. Viktor Zybert. А культурогенез – это понятие, если сказать просто, это выработка. We obey the laws of culture genesis. And culture genesis is the development of life support systems in these climatic, landscape and natural conditions. Culture means the way of life of groups of people and genesis is the development and adaptation. When a person settles down in the steppe, he tries to find contact with local animals. Cultural genesis is formed in order to become accustomed to a certain environment. These ancient techniques are applied in the steppe no matter who lives there. They will become adapted as far as possible. They eat only that food that will save their energy and will allow them to survive in this steppe. In the previous episodes, we talked about horses of the Botai culture. We'll start today's episode with them as well, because the Botais were the first to select and breed horses. Strong evidence is suggested by Victor Zybert's works. The Botai horses had a height of 160 centimeters. There were medium-sized horses of up to 175 centimeters, and there were tall ones up to 182 centimeters. Studies say that tall horses were used for riding. During archaeological excavations, an object similar to the device for the castration of horses was discovered. That is, the Botai people were already engaged in the selection and domestication of horses, castrating certain horses in the herd. A man could only tame a horse while on horseback and lead the herds only sitting on a horse. The first foals were castrated and their natural aggression was brought down by puncturing their testicles. Thus, the horse, whose natural aggression was suppressed, allowed itself to be harnessed and put on two-legged and three-legged fetters as well as a saddle. The very technology of domestication of a horse did not take much time, as it is now. In seven to ten days, the horse can be tamed. If they are ridden through the water, through the snow, over swampy soil where the horses will have difficulty in movement. Uh, 
болотистой почвы, там, где у нее затруднения с физическими это, движениями, это облегчало приручение лошади. So 5,500 years ago, horses were first domesticated. Later, during the time of the Huns, they began to breed endurance horses suitable for warfare. In addition, the Huns divided horses in the herds according to coat color. In other words, red horses were bred in one herd, black horses in another. In the Turkic Khaganate, which appeared in the 6th century, the Karabayir horses were actively used for conducting hostilities. According to historical data, the Turks had up to 100,000 heads of horses in the cavalry. In the past days, every Kazakh Sultan had his own breed selection. Each tribe had its own breeding type, which were raised in accordance with natural conditions and the way of life. Hunters specially selected horses for themselves. Shepherds and military men were engaged in their own selection. During the Soviet Union, in state farms, horse selection was held for shepherds and even for leaders. That's all. For standard selection, it is necessary to ride a horse regularly and 90% of modern riders don't do it. If a horse is not ridden, what kind of selection can we talk about? Казах жеріндегі жылқы селекциясы қайдан бастау алып қалай дамығанын айттық. Енді бір қызық берек. This is how horse breeding began and developed on the Kazakh land. An interesting fact, the Kazakhs and Mongols have the shortest names for horses. In Kazakh, the horse means at, in Mongolian uk. The Indians of Peru use the longest word for a horse. Okvila upara klamaro koalu naklunata. If translated literally, it means the bold guanaco of a white man who came from the sea. This was said to mention the Spanish people. To think logically, Kazakhs and horses are a single whole and inseparable concept. Let's now dwell on the traditional horse breeding of the Kazakh people. Horses and donkeys always know where there are bass pastures, Corquette. Traditionally, Kazakh people breed horses in the herd. We have everything we need for this, water, land and pastures. The Kazakh horse is raised in the herd from birth. The herd is led by a stallion leader. It bravely guides the group, never gets lost, and defends its herd from dangers. Therefore, the choice of the leader of the herd is very important. A foal born in the herd rises to its feet within a few minutes. It doesn't need to be hand-fed. So the foal grows with everyone in the steppe in spring, in summer, in autumn until winter. The foal must withstand the winter frost. The weakest can survive the cold and die. The vulnerable can't keep up with the herd. Unfortunately, these are the laws of nature, thus foals pass through natural selection already in the first year of life. 
Yürge kusatın ayırır, birinci sınbattı, kelbetti, kelsken. Lead stallion is chosen according to its appearance. Mostly handsome and strong horses are chosen. Such qualities of the stallion as his character, the ability to mate with mares, the ability to defend the herd and mares from wolves, dogs and other predators are evaluated. Thirdly, people evaluate its heredity, pedigree, achievements of the horse's ancestors. Thus, the herd leader, who meets all the requirements, leads the herd of 15 to 20 mares. The most outstanding stallions are leaders in the herd of 30 or more mares. The English horse breeders take care of both a mare and its foal immediately after birth. If the foal stands up to its feet in one day, it is considered a very good sign. This information is even recorded in a notepad. Mares nurse their foals, in addition they are fed vitamins. Kazakh traditional horse breeding does not interfere with the natural selection of horses. The foal grows by itself. It develops in natural conditions. A horse should be grazed by a person who possesses character stronger than the horse hooves. Kazakh wisdom. The foal that survived the winter is called Tai. Then children begin to ride such foals. Children rode only foals and even held by ge horse races with a distance of 6 to 8 kilometers. Already then, during such competitions, Kazakh people determined a future stallion in the herd. In the 19th century, when the English people began to breed purebred horses, they reduced race distance of 6.5 to 9.5 kilometers to 5 kilometers, since the English horses can only gallop 5 kilometers at high speed. Tai is a yearling up to two years old. When yearlings turn one year old, they are called Thai. During this period, examination and monitoring of such yearlings begin. They are being prepared for competitions between the same age horses. Not all colts are fast, therefore, they are chosen depending on their shape of the bones, endurance, gait and coat color. After this, the chosen cult is sent to the competition. A yearling from two to three years old is called in Kazakh Kunan. The herd leader drives such yearlings out of his herd. Why? In order to prevent inbreeding. This is the sign of nobility of the Kazakh horses. Baigay is also arranged for young Kunans. Its distance doesn't exceed 15 kilometers. The races couldn't be extended to long distances because the bones and lungs of a young horse couldn't withstand it. During the Kunan Baigay races, the future of the horse is determined. Its speed is also evaluated.
There is an image of a real Kazakh horse selective breeding. Thai races weren't held for fun, but for the rigorous selection of horses. A five-year-old horse is prepared for Alaman Baige. It can gallop over the distance of 42 kilometers. Why exactly 42? What is the story behind this? Before in the Kazakh steppes, post offices were located on every 42nd kilometer. Thus, a mail carrier had to ride 42 kilometers. This distance was called the midday distance. Namely, such a distance is suitable for the horse so that it recovers quickly and has a rest. Most likely, it was precisely this distance that formed the basis of the Alaman Baige horse races. Dear viewers, now we will have an interview with Edgard Schumacher, a specialist in equestrian sport polo. We will have an online conversation. Edgard is in Munich. One thing needs to be said in advance. Polo is a variation of the ancient Kazakh competition called Shogen. But that's not the point right now. In 2017, Edgard bought Kazakh Karabayirs to play polo. Let's talk about it in detail. Hello, Edgard. Thank you for sharing the time to join us today for an interview. Agjol, good day. Thank you. I'm fine. We play polo and I hope you're doing well too. We have an opportunity to practice equestrian sports and enjoy life. Edgard. The first question is, why did you choose exactly Karabayirs for playing polo? If we compare the horses from England and Argentina, the Karabayir horses are more aggressive in the game and work well on defense, and they are not afraid of contact with other horses. They are fearless in the game. At the same time, the Karabayirs are reliable. Experts associate this with the mentality and intelligence of the Karabayirs. And one more question. What can you tell us about selective breeding and horse breeding in general? As for the selection, it is the process of developing a new breed. The selection means to breed natural capacities of a horse and qualities inherent to it. In this regard, the Karabayir horse has all the necessary qualities to breed any desired type for a particular equestrian sport. So far, we can't beat Great Britain, which is a recognized leader in equestrian sports. The first horse racing in England took place in 1174 under the reign of Henry II. 5,000 foals are born in England every year. 66% of them don't participate in the races at all. 80% of the horses participating in the races will be unsuitable after four years of age. Let's think logically. 
the British will not sell their best horses, now you understand what quality horses are delivered to our country. According to statistics, over 5 million people visit British race courses every year. Equestrian sports have a huge impact on the British economy. If the British lose their horses, their economy will collapse. And if we lose our horses, we will lose our traditions and customs. This is the difference. A good horse, even without a mane, will never lose its strength. Folk wisdom. I would like to tell you an interesting fact. The Turkmen's dug a hole in the ground and poured salt into it to lengthen the necks of their horses. Let's continue to give facts and arguments in favor of choosing the Kazakh horse. This is connected with hunting type known as Sayat Shilik. It must be said that the Kazakhs have never considered hunting a way of earning money or surviving. First of all, it was an ancient and noble art. <laughs> Kazakhs went hunting to see their horses and tazi dogs in process. Considering that the hunting lasts one to two days and sometimes a week, only a real hardy horse can withstand it. The horses were tested for endurance and dexterity when climbing mountains and chasing after animals. In addition, hunting rabbits with a horse was popular. Rabbits are fast and dexterous animals, difficult to catch. So Kazakhs, exhausting themselves, their horses and greyhounds hunted rabbits in the steppe. Hunting is an essential way to check a horse in. <laughs> Pacers were specially bred and selected for hunting because only pacers can travel long distances comfortably. Of course, fast horses are accustomed to long-distance travels, but for women and the elders, pacers are still an excellent solution. Our ancestors guarded this boundless steppe riding the pacers. Horse breeders view pacers as a separate type of a horse or a separate classification. People have to treat pacers seriously. Nowadays, people cover long distances driving a comfortable car, but before they traveled along long roads on their pacers. Hunting is a great opportunity for proper selection of horses. Now people go hunting with a gun and kill animals. Once Kazakhs were in alliance with nature. They hunted only with greyhounds and birds of prey, which chased mostly weak animals, the ones they were able to catch up with. Strong animals that were able to escape from the hunters and survive continued their breed and had offspring. Now everyone is hunting for trophies. There are many big game hunters who shoot preferably strong males and then boast about killing animals in front of others. As a result, weak and sick animals breed. The same situation happens in herds. A young stallion is often chosen instead of an experienced and mature leader. I saw it so many times. It's not about the age, it's about the genes of a horse. Strong, experienced, trained and, most importantly, healthy stallions must breed, have offspring.
Mesela ayırdı, kar ayır, bırak mıhtı ayır. Sulu, tuhumu zor da, tuhumu beri verip. Ve onu stav kürüp o. Ne için sen jastı, alsızlık olsa sen? Bu jast, bola versin, bırak o alsız bu. The Kazakh horses still raise keen interest in the whole world. So let's find out how did our oldest horses have distinguished themselves as strong animals. Mr. Edgar, how did Kazakh horses perform in such sport as polo? просто для того, чтобы попробовать, насколько он подходит под поло. Тренировали его год. First we brought from Kazakhstan only one Karabayir horse named Magnat. We trained it during one year. We wanted to try it in equestrian polo. In the end it coped perfectly well. Showed itself only from the best side. Then we brought two more Karabayirs. One of them, just like Magnat, showed an excellent game. We noticed in them some kind of passion for polo. Then we also wanted to bring from Kazakhstan from Daniar Dauke several Karabayirs for training and for sale. But the pandemic has changed everything and we couldn't bring horses to Europe. Still we hope that the borders will open and we will finally bring the horses here. Он довольно-таки молодой считается, как конь для, для полуигры. Планировали в прошлом году привезти еще двух лошадей, уже под тренировку и под продажу, но не получилось из-за карантина, из-за ограничений по возу. Но надеемся, что в этом году или в следующем году мы сможем реализовать наши планы. So, the first, the Kazakh horse was traditionally kept in a herd and allowed to grow freely without interfering with its natural development. Second, thanks to the Alaman Baige, future stallions can be easily recognized at a distance of 42 kilometers. Third, the horse was tested for endurance when people went hunting with it. Now there is the fourth point of horse breeding. This is Kokpar. Dear viewers, we decided to make a special episode to review the details and aspects of this sport. We want to say that only the real Karabayir horse can withstand Kokpar game with dignity. Kokpar is the most important moment in traditional horse breeding. <laughs> A horse raised in the herd distinguishes itself well in Kokpar. As a foal it plays with other foals in the herd, the foal learns to live and behave in a group. The horse that passes through the natural selection and can defend itself in the herd behaves freely among adult, strong horses when it comes to Kokpar. Such horses compete in the Kokpar as if they simply play in the herd. It always wants to show itself. We need to develop the Kazakh Kokpar on a large scale. There are a lot of horses, so we need to hold big competitions. Kokpar is a dangerous sport with many horses involved. Naturally, horses that have been bred in the herd are suitable for the game. In the national game Kokpar, we must prohibit mounted games. When one player has a large horse, it rams through all horses and the second participant riding a lower horse calmly follows him and reaches the carcass of the goat. This should be banned because only tall and only undersized horses are being selected. But there are no universal horses. <laughs> Ortaşa boylu yani mıhtı atka seleksiye jasap jürümüz. You watch the fourth episode of the Horse King of Livestock project. For example, in the first episode we proved that horses were first domesticated in the Kazakh land. In the second episode, we proved that the English, Turkmen and Russian horses carry the DNA of the Kazakh Karabayirs in their blood. 
in the third episode, we told and showed the Karabayers themselves, presented arguments and facts. In today's program, we told about the selection of the Kazakh horses. We have conducted a tremendous work, looked through many archival materials, searched for the information and collected evidence on the internet. We wanted to present this evidence not to the whole world, but to the Kazakh people, that is, to you. We collect only facts. Watch and comment the videos on the Kazakh TV YouTube channel. Wait for the next episode with me, Agjol Taukan.